Cost of living crisis, Ukraine war, I don't know, uh, Brexit, uh, you name it. I mean, none of these stories matter a jot compared to this story. And that is, Philip Schofield has sensationally quit. He's resigned from this morning ITV's magazine show, its daytime magazine show, after 21 years at the helm. Uh, after a psychodrama behind the scenes involving him and his former best friend, co-host Holly Willoughby, uh, we hear that their relationship went from friendly to frosty in double quick time, and now they barely talk to each other, and last week the chemistry between these two was so bad that hundreds of thousands of viewers stopped watching this morning. Uh, 500,000, in fact. Uh, they lost hemorrhaged viewers. Now, at that point, we hear that on Friday, Philip Schofield, the stalwart of this programme, was told by bosses, you have to go. You must go. And so he agreed to quit in return for being offered a prime time show, plus hopefully retaining his other shows that he does like Dancing on Ice, The Cube, uh, and uh, he'll get at least one more uh, prime time show, we're told. So he cut a deal, but he resigned. Uh, and we're told that uh, Holly said either he goes or I do, and they decided to keep Holly and get rid of Phil. In TV terms, uh, it doesn't get much bigger than this. This is the end of uh, a couple who were once the leading golden couple of daytime telly, uh, the king and queen of all they surveyed. Uh, winning uh, awards year after year after year, friendly on screen, friendly off screen. That's all gone. And uh, when the viewers saw on them last week, they thought these two can't stand each other. And it's obvious. And there's one thing viewers can't stand. It's TV presenters pretending to be friends, you know, pretending to be sincere. They can't stand that kind of insincerity. So uh, he had to go. Uh, quite a story. Uh, let's talk to media commentator Nigel Pawley. Hello, Nigel. Hello, Kevin, my old best mate. How are you? Yeah, Great yeah, that's you. right. Yeah. Oh, Nigel. Great. Yeah. How long do we go back? Yeah, all that rubbish. Uh, but uh, that's what it had come down to, wasn't it? With Phil and Holly, it had come down to them pretending to be friends uh, yeah. when they clearly weren't. And at that point, the viewers can see through that, and they hated it. And they about half a million of them stopped watching last week. That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, the, the 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 illusion the illusion was finally shattered. I think it was a bit of a thin illusion anyway. I don't think they were that close, really. But it was carefully honed and created. But never has a show watched by so few people inspired and created so many headlines. You know, it's incredible. There's five hundred thousand people watch this show now, and yet it's dominated the news for the past couple of weeks and I, I still think there's lots of mileage to come from this story because <laughs> from Fleet Street's you know, point of view yeah well because, I mean we don't know, we don't know who's going to replace them yet we're thinking well, it might be uh, Holly and Alison Hammond who's been a big hit on the Friday show so well, that would be quite tomorrow, good tomorrow we've got actually Alison Hammond and Dermot O'Leary because uh, t uh, Holly is taking an early uh, half term break so she's not on screen either. So that's quite diplomatic or quite convenient. So Alison Hamden, Dermot O'Leary. Ryland might well come back as well in there. Um, but I'm not sure that uh, Holly is actually all that secure because what ITV bosses will look at over the summer break, remember this show always has a break until September when their um, contracts were due to come up anyway. Yeah. Schofield originally, they hoped to let it last out till September and him not come back. Uh, that would be the dignified thing for him to do after all so many yeah. years. But things are so bad, he had to go. However, how, they've got to look at now, how much is Holly connected to Phil? Is it Phil and Holly? Dancing well, and Holly. Yeah, you're right. They'll have to find that out. But, they, but they're rolling the dice on her. And their their uh, conclusion being yes. that out of this couple who were once golden but have become toxic, that she's still popular and Schofield isn't. And they have uh, reached that conclusion by looking at social media and everyone. You're, you're right, right. They'll, they'll have to test her out, but um, she, she's, she's got, got the gig. And, ahead of her. Yeah. I mean, Schofield's uh, over 16, she's in, uh, you know, sort of late early 30s or early 40s. Yeah. So, 
But it's an interesting changing of the guard because you mentioned Phil and Holly, and these were ITV's great big award-winning long-standing couple. But Anton Deck this week announced that Sassley Takeaway also is going to be breaking next year, and they've been winning awards for about 25 years. So it's an interesting changing of, you know, there's a lot... Bit a of a changing of the guard. Let me, ask you, let me ask you this. Uh, as you and I well know, I mean, Philip Schofield used to not only rule the roost at this yeah. morning, he had a big say in everything that ever happened at ITV. He was a very, yeah. very powerful character. Uh, and uh, so he's gone from that to being someone who's been kicked out the door. He was told on Friday, you've got to go. We see you as the problem. You, you know, you've become the story. The viewers don't like it. You have to go. Uh, we are now hearing that he's saying that ITV have hung him out to dry. Uh, but I don't think ITV had any choice. If they think he's causing this problem uh, that the viewers don't like, then he has to go, right? Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because the statements that they both put out were very, very pointed. If you were, like, you know, they used to say the Kremlin watchers, if you look at TV statements... Uh, I would suggest that Holly didn't really mention Phil, you know, that how much friendly they were. And he more or less said that he didn't want to go. He was asked to leave, but ITV decided. Uh, so he feels he's been hung out to dry. I would say he's in denial of what's been happening because he's been so powerful. Remember... Yeah, you can hardly believe that he's now, yeah, you know, the boot's on the other foot and he's the one uh, getting kicked around. Uh, that's right. You remember that Amanda Holden was due to sit with him on yeah, the set. Yeah, and she, yeah, she went uh, public, he, he, yeah. He yeah. stopped her. Uh, there's been quite a few people over the years, Fern, uh, Fern Britton also claimed that he had a downfall. Eamon Holmes and, and Ruth Langs also claimed that he was behind. So him and his agents more or less selected people for that show, actually. And, and Holly yeah. Willoughby was chosen by him. She was his protégé, uh, you know, that, or his agent's protégé. She went on her own. I'd say the split started about three years ago. She set up her own agency and left his agency. Since then, they've had... They're not on holiday anymore. They used to holiday together in I the old garden. I know they did, That's yeah. what's happening. Uh, then they had the, the Queen's lying in state fiasco where... Holly felt... Oh, yeah, we just... Look, I was going to ask you that, Nigel. We were just looking at footage of that, of them, you know, when they queue-jumped uh, the yeah. uh, long procession to get in to see... to pay your respects to Her Majesty the Queen. We all remember those huge, long queues that even people like David Beckham decided the right thing to do was to stand there like everyone else, not Phil and Holly. Uh, they imperiously went to the front of the queue... And as a double act, that was it, wasn't it? I don't think they've ever recovered no. from that. Because you, you can commit a lot of crimes in this country, in, in the country of Great Britain, but don't jump the queue. You'll never be forgiven right. for that. That's it. You see, I don't, that's why I don't think, although Holly's won this battle, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that she's won the whole war because there was fallout for both of them from that. Now, I know that she's saying the statement that she read out and that was written for her about that incident at, at the Queen... She's unhappy with how that was portrayed and felt that she'd been thrown under a bus. So I still think there's more to that story than came out of the reasons why they queue-jumped and the feelings of the ill-feeling, if you like, from that. But when you've fallen, I can't think of anyone who's fallen as quickly yeah. as Philip Schofield. From a, in television terms, it's very hard to think of someone who has had it all and gone. Over a period of time, people... You know, Barrymore, perhaps was was a case in point but he was phil schofield has been around longer than barrymore and was having a more high profile show yeah so but, but, but schofield's got you know uh, a lot of uh, baggage shall we say <laughs> and uh, you know i can't verify these stories but you we all know them everybody in the business knows the stories of phil shall we say uh, acting like he was in charge of this morning and acting like he was in charge of ITV these are the allegations uh, you know he says that he's always been kind and nice um, you know if he believes that to be true who am I to say otherwise but this is the situation that, that he looks as if he's one of those people who didn't remember that old adage uh, be nice to people on your way up because when you're on your way down you might need them <laughs> that's right I mean, I'd like to hear what Gordon the Gopher would have to say about it because, you know, he's, he was dropped very quickly on in, in his career as he moved up the, 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 the sort of greasy pole. Yeah. There, there have been rumours behind the scenes 
that all wasn't really hunky dory. And I think there have been a lot of things that have been suppressed by ITV over the years uh, and and protected. And it's quite interesting, uh, Kevin, that a bit like in, the, in Hollywood, you lived there for a while in the, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, big stars could be protected by the studio. But once they'd lost their value, yeah. the studios were ruthless. And in this case, I think Schofield has been protected by ITV for many, many years and by a bubble of publicity and the publicists and, and you know, whatever. But in the last six months, that cocoon of, of, of protection has, has just gone. And the rug has been totally pulled under him. I would imagine his head must be absolutely inspiring. Because he actually was told on Thursday that he, he wouldn't be back. They gave him Friday to, so he could disappear out of the country. I think he's... Well, he's, got, he's gone down to Cornwall to see his mum, hasn't he? But, but, well, he's, he's, but he's... Uh, I mean, he, he, we're hearing that he's a broken man, you know. And you're right. I mean, this has all unfolded uh, with indecent haste. He's obviously had his uh, off-screen problems that aren't all his fault. It's not his fault that his brother is now a convicted paedophile doing 12 years in prison. That's not Philip's fault, but it does add to... Uh, a picture of someone that uh, is not, uh, shall yeah. we say, at ease in his position well, on a happy TV to... show. Yeah. He's lost his job. His brother's been sent down for 12 years, so it, it's understandable that he would want to go and see his mum. She must be in a terrible state. You know, you get mothers, two sons there, and both of them are uh, you know, in, in different type of yeah. trouble. But... That's a lot of pressure to take on. I'm not going to try and defend Philip Schofield, but by the same token, if you can imagine what's happened to him in the last couple of weeks, that's a lot for a guy to take in who's used to having clicking his fingers and having people run around to suddenly be the guy who's out of the door at ITV, isn't important, and he's got this stuff with his brother to cope with. Obviously, a distraught family as well. They must be going through hell. So... You know, those pick the sympathy, but by the same token, you can see what sort of turmoil that guy must be in this weekend. Yeah, it's, it's certainly after 21 years, it's a, a sensational way for it all to come crashing down. I didn't think it happened this way, Kevin. I thought they'd give him an out. You know, I thought they would ease it out uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, it would go, but in a more dignified way. I was shocked by how brutal it was that they went on Friday, I think. I, 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 I wasn't bit. shocked. I wasn't shocked. The moment they started, that the viewing figures started plummeting by hundreds of thousands, I thought, well, someone's going to go here. So they, yeah. they've got to do something. They, they can't sit down and just watch your audience disappear. So. But there was no way out, though, Kevin, because you'd have thought they, they would have given... If there was a way they could have protected him, they would have had a better story of how he's going. But by giving, by more or less giving him the chop overnight and not really even letting him say cheerio to viewers, that shows what sort of crisis ITV were in and also how far he's fallen down from where he was. He didn't have any bargaining power to say, I'll leave in September. Blah, well, they, blah, they, blah, they, I mean, they wanted him out the door. They identified yeah. him as the specific yeah. problem. As I said earlier, uh, out of the two, they decided Holly is still the golden girl, but he yeah. is a massive problem. And if you've been looking at uh, it's not necessarily always the pointer to the truth of any situation, but if you've been looking at Twitter over the past couple of weeks, I mean, uh, there isn't a lot of love out for Phil Schofield out there. No. No, it's, it's, it's amazing how long... Because he started out as, like, you know, most kids grew up with him, you know, in the broom cupboard or whatever at the BBC. Yeah. It's amazing how far he's been in people's lives, you know, 30, 30 years, 40 years. Yeah. And how quickly that has been taken away and gone. It's, it's interesting how someone who's been a part of people's lives on television so long should just fall from, uh, from grace so quickly and so brutally. Yeah, and but he's obviously he's obviously done himself a deal where they're going to give him some prime time show. Well, they have promised that. So they're he's got a nice face saving deal, I think. They'll, they'll well, give him a go. Ready to get columns, don't they? They don't always have them. Last yeah, I, I think the question to think about now, Nigel, is whether or not, you know, I mean, they've really gone off him. The this morning viewers. The yeah. question is, is have people gone off him generally? Uh, because yeah. if they give him a prime time show and nobody tunes in, that's right. Uh, well, uh, who knows uh, where that? And also, be. what happens with Holly? Cause he co-hosts a couple of things with Holly. Yeah, I mean, I can't see that working out safe for no. Dancing on Ice anymore. I think you're absolutely right. Fascinating situation, though, Nigel. Good to talk to you about it. Thank you so much for your time.